All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Johannesburg in South Africa with Stephen Van Basten. How are you doing today, Stephen? Very good. Very good. Thank you. It's a bit chilly here in Johannesburg, but uh, but we are, we are loving it. <laughs> the cold is actually very awesome. Yeah, well, I, I can't complain here because it's beautiful in, here in San Diego and it's uh, the 4th of July was yesterday and it's, again, the sun came out and it's good. People think the sun is out all the time in, in San Diego, but we've actually had a terrible year so far. And I know I know everybody's heart bleeds for us, but uh, there you go. <laughs> I'm trying to find some empathy, but I'm yes. struggling. I know, I know. Most people do. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so so Stephen's an author and a speaker, and you know he helps um, salespeople and all. And what we wanted to talk today about, and I'm kind of very excited about this topic, is is it takes next level commitment to succeed at sales. So, um, Stephen, what do you mean by next level commitment? Yeah, thank you. So, uh, you know, I we have a we at the Union of Sales here in South Africa. We have a, a belief that. Um, you know, it's the inner game is what makes the difference. It's, uh, you know, I'm going to name drop a little bit, but T. of Ecker, you know, he claims that uh, you can never earn more than your self-worth. Uh, and it's true. Uh, you know, if Bob Proctor said that many years ago, you programmed by uh, the family you were born into and the, the environment you were born into. And it's very, very true. So one of the greatest things we can do as salespeople, actually as, as, as people, because, you know, when we talk about success at sales, it's, it's life. Uh, you know, everything's personal development. It's not just sales development, it's all personal development and, and life development. So, but, you know, the greatest thing, in our opinion, is, to, is working on self-esteem, self-belief, and uh, and from there, of course, the next level commitment. The, it's the commitment to do whatever it takes. And you know, when, whenever we speak to, to to crowds, we go, "Will you do whatever it takes?" And they go, "Yeah, yeah." You know, could you be earning double of what you are right now? Are there people in your industry earning double of what you are? They go, "Yeah, yes." And then we go, "Well, why aren't you?" You know, why aren't you? And, and it's because they don't have that commitment. They don't have that next level commitment to to do whatever it takes. Um, you know, we 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 believe that to you know success in anything, but especially sales, would be find out where you are right now, and then decide where you want to be, and then make sure it's important enough. Whether well, if it's not important enough, you'll you'll never stick it through, and then decide. You know, make a decision that you're going to see the season and and stick to it until you achieve it, and then um, you know decide what you need to do, what steps you need to take to get there, and then some some fun stuff. Get a you know get a visual like a dream board. Right? Mm-hmm. We add get some affirmations under that. So there's a bit of the esoteric thing to that. Esoteric for want of a better word, right? Yeah. And then tell them about it. You know, and ask them to keep you accountable whenever they see you. You know, ask them to ask you how you doing on that goal. How are you doing yeah. with that? Uh, uh, well, you've you've just you've just added a piece in. You see there that uh, that that's the critical piece that people hate, and that's the accountability piece. Because if I go tell you, if I say, Stephen, my goal this year is X, you know, and and if you keep asking me about it, you know, then you're holding me accountable. Yeah, it's much better if I just keep it to myself because then I I've got because then nobody knows about it. if I don't make it, it doesn't matter. So it's the accountability piece is critical, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then and then the next one, in our opinion, take massive action. Take do the steps needed to get there. So you know, John Demartini will say, you know, take take steps every day, small little steps. It'll take you closer to your big goal. Mm-hmm. And one day you'll go, oh my gosh, there we are! I just achieved it. So uh, you know, we're big on action. We're big on the inner and the outer. And um, I don't, you probably don't know too much uh, about the yin yang of sales. We've, I have a partner, he's an Indian fellow, lovely guy. We met, we're so different. He's tall, dark and handsome. I'm short, fat and ugly, right? And he works on the outer game. I work on the inner game. He's like sales domination. I'm sales persuasion. Mm-hmm. And uh, together we just yin yang. It's so beautiful. He's like a soulmate, but we don't do the funny stuff late at <laughs> night, right? And, uh, together we, we're just so powerful. But, but you know, um, Many people are just focused on the numbers and the this and the that and overcoming objections, but they're broken inside. Yeah, and yeah. so it's the inner game, that inner belief that's so powerful. 
And there's a couple of things I just wanted to unpack here. And there's a couple of, I think, cultural forces at play today that's really affecting people's ability to do these things. The first one I, I call the comparison culture, right, is where, you know, and social media, unfortunately, has been such a, a vehicle for this. Is like people see other people on social media, they fill in the gaps and they go, oh, my God, Stephen is having the greatest life ever. My life sucks. And and as you say, the self-esteem goes down. The other cultural uh, phenomena is what I call the shortcut culture is where everybody seems to be saying, oh, there's an easy way to do this. Just get this app or, or here's some AI that's going to do this for you. And so the idea of hard work has gone away. So if you get caught up in comparison and you think the shortcuts, it's uh, it's not going to set you up well, is it? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, as, as old fashioned as it may seem, and I'm 55, so I guess I come from that era, right, is uh, Maslow's hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And I, I think what we're all about is, is getting to that self-actualization. And, and recently I had an aha moment, um, and that was self-actualization is actually, you know, self-affirmation, self-validation. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so to me, it, it, we don't mind what anyone else is doing. In fact, we we believe that we've we've created something absolutely new. We followed nobody, uh, and we've silenced the critics, and we've just we've just dented the universe and created something absolutely new. And we totally believe that you can have anything you want, on condition that you're clear about it and you're willing to to put in the time and the effort and the energy over time. And this is my thing. Uh, this is my current belief, right? That, that big things take two years to manifest. Mm -hmm. So. If I wanted a Maserati, you know, I could manifest that in, in a year or so. In fact, I could I could do it now. It's just not important enough, right? right. But anything important enough, and because the universe tests you, you know, you go, oh, I want to do this, this, and this. And the universe goes, you know, are you sure? 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 <laughs> and, uh, and manifestation takes, so we have a lot of next level ideas, and one of them is next level manifestation. And it's really about getting this vision a, you know, a picture of what you're after, getting the affirmation, saying them every time, feeling what it would feel like, you know, not a lot of NLP stuff there in a game. Uh, but with time and energy, if you keep plugging at something, it's impossible not to achieve it. Like sales, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in sales, mm -hmm. my belief is that if you have a viable product in a viable market at a viable price, if you see enough people, Tom Hopkins style, right, mm -hmm. see Team Tech, day belly to belly if you see enough people it's impossible not to make a sale yeah 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 abso yes. absolutely and and just also just coming back to a couple of things that you said there i think uh, is incredibly important is often people set goals right or say in sales you have a big quota for this year right and Yes, you're, you want to f focus on the goal and say, this is what I want to achieve, but it comes back to your small steps. And sometimes people forget that, yes, there's the goal, but I have to put one foot in front of the other to get there. And sometimes people just back off because they think, oh, well, that goal, I don't know what I was thinking or that quota, I'm never going to get there. Instead of saying, if I take these steps consistently over the next while, I will chip away at that. And I think that's, I think sometimes people get caught between the goal and taking those small steps. Absolutely. And, you know, once again, forgive me, I, I, I love John De Martini at the moment, but, you know, um, oh gosh, I think I've just forgotten what I was going to say. Uh, so, um, uh, yes, he, he, that's why one of our steps there was make sure it's important enough. Because mm -hmm. he can tell you if it's high in your values, there's a chance, if you put a, have a goal high in your values, there's a better chance of it manifesting than low in your values. Because low in your values are really New Year's resolutions. I should, I should, I should, mm -hmm. I should go to gym more, I should lose some weight. Well, you never do because it's not really important enough. Yeah. So, to all of this is, is it truly important to you? And, and, I can't, I can't tell you how important that is because if you want if you want to manifest something over two years, it's got to be important enough, and and that's why the that's why it takes time, and, and that's why the universe tests it to see is it really important because yeah. otherwise we'll be manifesting all sorts of stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. that's the interesting the interesting part, like you said, is uh, is just because you you know even want something badly enough or whatever, you say the universe will test you. It will. It will throw obstacles in front of you to see. Meh. How, how much do you want this? So here's a little obstacle. Let's say, do you back off at the first obstacle or do you figure out a way around it? Sure. And, you know, uh, it's the same when people get married. Mm -hmm. When you get married, you say to the universe, I'm going to stay with this person for the next 60 years. And the universe goes, 
Yeah, really. Let's <laughs> let's let's. And, uh, you know, if it's important enough, you stay together, right? Yes. And if it's not, then you know, uh, you move on. And things are so modular these days. You know, if you if your clutch goes on your car, they don't fix it anymore. They just take it out, put a new one in. Yes. And so now, when you get upset with your wife, you just take her out and put a new one in. <laughs> yeah. Too simple. You know. <laughs> and I think that I think that comes back to that idea of you know of of commitment. Like of really, if if this, as you say, I mean, if you just took the analogy of marriage, if this is important enough for you you'll work on it because you know it's never going to be 100 percent perfect okay when you put two people together same in 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 sales it's never going to be you know it's never going to be simple it's always going to be difficult and it depends how how badly you want it and i also you know like that idea. we were talking before we came on air just for everybody about martial arts because we both share a, a, a passion for martial arts and it's when you go into martial arts, you ha there's always people faster, stronger, higher rank than you, right? Mm -hmm. You have yeah. to you have to figure out your goals, and and then you have to really work. Your biggest competitor in every dojo or dojang you go into is yourself, right? Sure. Absolutely, and of course, I mean this is a sales talk, right? So when you step onto the the tournament floor mm -hmm. to do a cutter, you sell in your cutter to the judges. Yeah. When you score a point, you 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 sell in that point to the judges. Also, and and I tell people, you you know, when you start winning world champs, uh, is 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 four years ago and four years before that. Mm -hmm. It's a, a process. But then the judges are watching you while you're warming up. They they watching when you carry your instructor's bag into the into the tournament. You know, they 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 watch your demeanor. The the whole the whole day is a sale. And then when you walk, you step onto the tatami. Then oh, now the judges suddenly see you and and so is the same it's this preparation and this this uh, inner beingness that, yeah, yeah. That, um, that is important and and by the and way I, so I i love the way i love you brought that up because it's one of the things that i've been talking about recently is that to your point is is even on the day right if you're if you have a, a sales meeting coming up or just like you have a tournament or whatever coming up on the day how you wake up and prepare yourself all day long is critical so what kind of influences you fill your head with? Are they positive? You know, are you fully prepared? Do you have, do you look well? Are you, are you putting across the bed? It's like turning up. If you turn up for your tournament in a, in a uniform that looks like it was crumpled up and thrown in your bag three weeks ago, guess what? Judges aren't going to be impressed, right? Same thing sure. in a sense. But it's, it's, all the preparation should go into it, as you say, not just, oh, I'm sales meeting starting. Okay, game on, game face on. <laughs> Sure. And, you know, uh, and also one of the big things I love to talk about is, is just manners, you know, so, yeah. so, so you're in the sales environment and, and somebody walks in with a, with a, with a tray of, of coffee and tea, you know, do you, do you just watch them or do you get up and, and, and take that and, and, you know, a woman walks in and you stand up, people look at you and they go, really? I go, yep. Absolutely. Somebody shakes my hand. I stand up, yeah. male, female, black, white, whatever, yellow, green, I stand up and they go, no, don't, don't stand up. It's just me. I go, no, it is you. Yeah. I'm yeah. standing up for you. You know, so yeah. it's all of that stuff. It's so so powerful, and 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 um, a lot of the non-verbal stuff makes makes a lot of impression. Yeah. We work uh, both Vanessa and I are actually um, NLP coaches, okay. neuro linguistic mm -hmm. programming, and we do well. Two things with NLP. One is rapport building. Rapport building and NLP are just so powerful and. Nobody ever bought from you that that doesn't like you. In every sale, especially big ones, there's some rapport that has to take place. There's some credibility and, and togetherness. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is, and Tony Robbins is big on this name dropping again there, is, uh, is being in state. You know, mm -hmm. So we use anchors. So we anchor, we've got our power anchors like enthusiasm, uh, triumph, uh, resourcefulness, and laughter. Uh, Vanessa, now we, we anchor laughter in, in all of our, tr our training and when we're together, whenever we laugh, and it's actually in our vision statement to have loads of fun, right? Uh, but whenever we laugh, we have an anchor and we anchor it. And, and since doing that, we've been happier. But also when we walk into the sales environment, we, we fire off that anchor and we've got another one on the right wrist that's uh, only in all of the traits of great salespeople. So it's a John Demartini thing, but we've we've tweaked it into the sales environment, right? So we fire off, I'm a great salesperson, we fire off, I'm in peak state, and and the two of us together walking into any room, it's, it's actually scary, man. They, yeah. they, they have no 
<laughs> they don't have a choice. <laughs> and again, and again, just for everyone, I, lo- I love what you just highlighted there. Uh, you know about the being the present or the state, because I think that's incredibly important. Because again, if I go back to, um, you know, pervasive culture we live in today, you know, we become so short term focused. Uh, our our attention span. We have all of these de- narcissistic devices that are going. Ooh, look at me! Look at me! Text! Look at me! Look at me! And and if we're not careful, we we can allow ourselves to be in a distracted state all the time, not being fully present. And it's really noticeable. Right. Um, if, for mm-hmm. instance, during this interview, I don't even know my phone is actually. But if I was if I was checking my if I was checking my phone on the side, you'd know immediately, you, you know, that I'm not fully engaged in this. And it's the same. But people are falling into that trap of not being present, of not being fully engaged. And as you say, it's something that you can actually consciously work on. Right. Absolutely. And, and really, the first step to that, in my opinion, is to, to genuinely love what you do. Mm-hmm. So when you genuinely love what you do, you can't help being present. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this chat, I mean, this, this, is like, this is like a chat. We're talking about stuff we love. We're both present because I don't want to see my what's on there because I'm enjoying this so much. Yeah. So really, part of that is, part of the start of that is, is to do what you love, genuinely do what you love. And, and some of us on the planet are, are very blessed to, to be able to say, you know, 90% of the time I'm doing what I love. From there, yes, you can train it. You can train it. Uh, but if you're doing something you hate, yeah, you know, we say to people, you know, there are five inner game um, um, uh, traits of, of very um, very successful salespeople and business people. I'll give you them quickly. One, these are the beliefs. I work for the best company on earth. Mm-hmm. Two, my products and services are world class. Three, I am enough. And this this is the self-esteem one, right? And then I'm able to differentiate my product in such a way that makes sense to my prospect. And number five, I love and my, my prospects are better off having bought from me. In other words, I bless people with my yeah. product. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you've got ten out, if you've got high on all of those, you can't help, you know. See, I tell people this is the greatest objection handling tool. I bless people with my product and in a knowing of that. Because if you truly believe you bless people, you won't leave until you've blessed them. Yeah, yeah. You won't. You won't, you can't. And if you do, you apologize for a few. I'm so sorry. I'm going to ask my maker for forgiveness tonight because I wasn't put it to you in a way that made you see how how important this is. You know, and uh, so yeah, yeah, you can can work at it. Yeah, no, I I I love that. Uh, I love that. And I think if you if you don't like what you're doing, if or if you even hate what you're doing, or whatever. I mean, maybe first of all, you should you should look inside and ask yourself, why do you hate what you're doing? And and is it is it the job? Is it the product? Is it the company? Or is it really you? As you said, is it really just you? Maybe you don't feel like this job. F- uh, you know, portrays what you think it should but and I think the great thing about sales and I love what you said there because we 100% agree with you because we actually think sales people are uh, wealth creators and peace producers because they're agents of trade right and and exactly yeah. what you just said there is like you are you are blessing people with something that's going to help them and that's a fantastic thing. and if you look at it through that prism then that's a, it's one of the greatest jobs you could ever have right Absolutely, yeah, yeah. You 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 become like the people you aspire to. So you know, and especially because we have a very spiritual side moving through what we do, and it's it's not the Ushiwa stuff. It's really it's a it's around you know, uh, for example, Jesus spoke on the on the Sermon on the Mount. All we do now is we have people coming into seminars and we speak to them and, and uplift them you know you uplift people with the gift of sales mm-hmm. you, they, they're eating better steaks drinking better wine going on on better holidays the kids are going to better schools and and you're uplifting humanity it's huge yes it's i huge. love that. i love that well we're bumping up against the end of our time um, Stephen. but before we go i'd like you to tell everyone a little bit more about you and how they can find out more well, uh, we call ourselves the yin yang of sales for obvious reasons. When you see my partner, and uh, you know we're in Johannesburg, South Africa, you can find the yin yang of sales on Facebook, on uh, the internet. Or we have a website. Uh, we're in Johannesburg, South Africa, and uh, yeah, we we have a mission, and that's really just to spread the gift of sales globally. Uh, if you if this is, and I believe it is, a global uh, uh, yeah. uh, who out there is going to be the first person to have the yin-yang of sales out of South Africa uh, doing some sales training for your company? 
Excellent. We'd love to be, we'd love to be your first. Excellent, excellent. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Again, thanks to Stephen. We could have talked for hours, I can tell, and hopefully you'll come back again sometime. Yeah, let's do it again. All right, perfect.